The preliminary practices of the great perfection is composed of three parts, the common or outer preliminaries, the uncommon or inner preliminaries, and the additional teachings on the swift path of taking rebirth, belonging to the Pure Land teachings. The common preliminary practices, also known as the common or outer preliminaries, include meditating on the difficulty of obtaining a precious human life, the impermanence of life, the law of cause and effect, the suffering of samsara, and the benefits of liberation. It is essential to practice the first four common preliminaries step by step. Otherwise, you won't generate renunciation. The fifth practice is contemplating the benefits of liberation. After thoroughly comprehending the benefits of liberation, your renunciation will truly arise. Next is following a spiritual teacher. After you have developed renunciation, you need to rely on a good spiritual teacher. The uncommon preliminary practices, also known as the uncommon or inner preliminaries, include taking refuge, the foundation of all the Buddhist paths, arousing bodhicitta, which aspires to benefit all sentient beings, Vajrasattva practice for purifying negative karma, Mandala offering for accumulating merit, Guru Yoga for receiving blessings into the mind. Lastly, it is the swift path of the Supreme Vajrayana practice, the three methods of taking rebirth. It is mainly about rebirth in the pure land of ultimate bliss. Of course, it is also possible to be reborn in other pure lands. In the Vajrayana practice, there is also a swift path to be reborn in the pure land of ultimate bliss. You should know that all teachings are inseparable from the pure land teachings. These teachings are not just preliminary practices. The preliminary practices of the great perfection perfectly encompasses the essence of the Buddha's 84,000 teachings. When it comes to combining theory and practice, it also contains the teachings of two omniscient masters, Long Chen Pa's Finding Comfort and Ease in the Nature of Mind and Jigme Ling Pa's Treasury of Precious Qualities. Many of you may have learned Long Chen Pa's Finding Comfort and Ease in the Nature of Mind. In the Golden Key Instructions, Petro Rinpoche said, It encompasses the authentic teachings of all the Buddhist traditions. Such a great treatise is unprecedented. It perfectly contains the immaculate teachings of various Buddhist traditions and is unparalleled in human history. Moreover, he said, It includes all nine vehicles of the Buddha's teachings. Finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind encompasses all the teachings of the nine vehicles and the preliminary practices of the great perfection contains all the essential points of these treatises. Therefore, this treatise is the essence and core of all the Buddha's teachings. If we practice according to it, we can attain the perfect Buddhahood in this very life. Therefore, don't consider it not sublime because it is called preliminary practices. In reality, it encompasses all the Buddha's teachings. It can be seen as both preliminary practice and actual practice. After completing these preliminary practices, whatever teaching you practice, you can succeed. You don't even need to practice other teachings. By simply practicing Guru Yoga, 
you can realize the great perfection, attain enlightenment, and see the true nature of reality. The preliminary practices of the great perfection contains the essence of all the Buddha's teachings. Now you should earnestly study it. The explanation of the rarity of obtaining a precious human life comprises four parts, reflecting on the nature of freedom, reflecting on the particular advantages related to the Dharma, reflecting on how difficult it is to obtain the freedoms and advantages through analogies, and reflecting on numerical comparisons. Number one. Reflecting on the nature of freedom. In general, freedom means having the opportunity to practice the Dharma and not being born in one of the eight unfree states. Unfree refers to eight states where there is no chance to practice the Dharma. As stated, being born as hell beings, hungry ghosts, animals, or long-lived heavenly beings, in border places or a kalpa without a Buddha, holding wrong views or with incomplete faculties. These are the eight states that lack freedom. In Madhyama Agama, the eight states without freedom are called the eight situations with obstacles or the eight impossible states. In the Sutra on the Eight Free and Unfree States, translated by Master Yi Jing, there is also a brief explanation of the Eight Unfree States. Therefore, the Eight Unfree States are also explained in Chinese Buddhism. You may have learned the rarity of precious human life to some extent, but it is hard to comprehend it fully. It is not easy for beings in the six realms to truly have the opportunity to study the Buddha's teachings. Hell Beings Beings reborn in hell are constantly tormented by the freezing cold in the cold hells, scorching heat in the hot hells, as well as various sufferings in the ephemeral hells and neighbouring hells. They have no opportunity to practice the Dharma. The Sutra on the Eight Free and Unfree States says, The hill of iron pillars, the pit of blazing embers, the swamp of putrescent corpses, the plain of razors, the forest of swords, etc. Beings in hell are tormented by countless sufferings. They never have an opportunity to hear the Buddha's teachings. Hungry ghosts, whether they live collectively or move through space, they all suffer from hunger and thirst. Animals, it not only refers to mammals, but also includes various birds, fish and insects. It refers to all non-human animals with a broader scope than mammals. Animals attack and devour each other, and most of them are consumed by humans. They live in fear. They risk their lives to find food, and often die in the process. Humans die for wealth. Birds die for food. Here, Birds represent all animals that die in the pursuit of food. Long-lived heavenly beings Some heavenly beings in the desire realm can hear the Buddha's teachings, but most heavenly beings cannot. In the desire realm, it is not easy to access the Dharma. In the formless realm, this becomes even more difficult. In the heaven of no thought, it is even more impossible to hear the Dharma. All heavenly beings have long lifespans. Here, long life heaven is a general term. 
Very few heavenly beings with sufficient merits have the opportunity to hear the Dharma. However, compared to us, it is much more difficult. Border region. It refers to the places where the Dharma is not flourishing. For example, for over 2,000 years, people in Europe and Africa haven't had the opportunity to hear the Buddha's teachings. Places without the Dharma are called border regions. In such places, there is no teaching or practicing of the Dharma, nor are there the four groups of disciples of the Buddha. Hence, there is no opportunity to practice the Dharma. For instance, my hometown is still a border place today where the Dharma is unavailable. When people see there is a monastic, it's like encountering an alien. They may have seen monastics on television, but rarely in their daily lives. They might come across monastics when they visit other places, but they hardly ever see monastics in my hometown. They have no idea what it means to be a monastic. Those who hold wrong views. Those who follow non-Buddhist paths or hold similar wrong views don't have the opportunity to practice the Dharma because their minds are tainted by wrong views. For example, most Chinese people are imbued with materialism from a young age, making it difficult for them to receive the Dharma. People are prone to following the crowd, thinking, if the government says so, it must be right. Since everyone studies it, it must be correct. With this herd mentality, they consider materialism correct without even studying it. Materialism is harmful, and those who hold such wrong views are unfortunate. Most Chinese people are influenced by wrong views. Not many people truly understand materialism. Most people just follow the masses, and their understanding of materialism is very narrow. Non-Buddhist beliefs mainly include the views of nihilism and eternalism. They are attached to either nothingness or permanence. Nihilists think that there is nothing after death, while eternalists believe that souls are immortal. Both views are wrong. Those who hold wrong views towards the Dharma and Guru are no different from non-Buddhists. They, too, have no opportunity to practice the authentic Dharma. Once their minds are tainted by wrong views, no matter how perfect their guru is, they cannot see it. No matter how authentically the guru teaches according to the Dharma, those tainted by wrong views cannot hear it. No matter how reasonable the teacher's explanation is, they only remember their wrong beliefs because they are contaminated by them. Such people are unfortunate, just like being sick. They cling to wrong views and don't listen to the teacher. They don't know why they feel they are right and cannot explain it. Even though the teacher teaches correctly, they refuse to accept it. How pathetic! For example, monk Sunakshatra served the Buddha for 25 years, But he did not have the slightest faith in the Buddha and held only wrong views. In the end, he was reborn as a hungry ghost in the garden. Monk Sunakshatra listened to the Buddha's teachings but didn't practice and realize them. Consequently, he couldn't understand them. Since the Buddha repeatedly taught the same content, Sunakshatra could even recite it. Over time, he started to feel that the Buddha was deceiving others and thus developed wrong views. His lack of faith is due to his lack of realization. 
if he had realized the Buddha's teachings, he wouldn't have developed wrong views. The more he practices, the more he would see how far he is from realizing the teachings. If one studies the Dharma without practicing it, one's arrogance will grow. As they keep learning concepts like emptiness, they end up not believing anything. The Buddha also told this story in the sutras. In the end, Sunakshatra was reborn as a hungry ghost with nine marks of ugliness. As Buddhism has been transmitted over thousands of years, the stories that the Buddha acted during his lifetime continue to unfold. The Buddha acted these stories for future generations to watch. Strangely, there are many such wicked people around great spiritual teachers. They may come to assist these great practitioners to attain enlightenment. Their wrong views and lack of reverence often help the great masters cultivate equanimity and patience. This is the truth behind the scenes. The great spiritual masters I have encountered also have individuals similar to Sunakshatra around them. Some are lay people, while others are monastics. Therefore, don't be surprised. The Buddha already acted out such stories. No Buddha comes. If one is born in a dark kalpa where no Buddha appears, one will never hear of the three jewels, not to mention practicing the Dharma. If no Buddha comes, there is no way. Nowadays, the Buddha's teachings are still available. Before Shakyamuni Buddha came, humanity was in complete darkness. If Confucius were not born, It would be like a long night for countless generations. If the Buddha did not come, it would be like an endless night forever. This is the situation. Sentient beings are ignorant of their directions, like animals in the forest. Humans are just part of the animal world. In the Buddha's eyes, we are part of the animal world. We stay with other animals, no different from them. If you lack wisdom and are ignorant of the truth of the universe and life, aren't you the same as wild animals? Essentially, there is no difference. Humans reproduce and fight with each other, like animals. For instance, when a young monkey grows up and defeats the old monkey king, it becomes the new monkey king. Similarly, humans also fight with each other and feed on each other. They merely wear some clothes, but fundamentally there is no difference. Therefore, if the Buddha did not come, it would be like an endless night forever. The Sutra also states, if one lives in a dark kalpa, where there are no Buddhas, no spiritual teachers, and no sublime teachings, how can one hear the Dharma? With incomplete faculties, those born with mental or physical defects cannot tame their minds with the Dharma. Thus, they have no opportunity to study and practice the Dharma. As it says, being born with impaired physical faculties such as deafness, blindness and muteness or dull mental faculties like that of an ox. Those who are mentally deficient have a human body but their minds are as dull as that of an ox. They toil throughout their lives and die like an ox in the end. They are ignorant of the Dharma and lack wisdom. They toil throughout their lives and somehow reach the end of their lives. Aren't they like an ox? Despite having a human body, their minds are as dull as an ox. This group of beings refers to all those with incomplete faculties. 
It also includes those with mental disorders who cannot comprehend the Dharma. Aren't they like being deaf or mute? There are numerous such people in the world. Although they have a human body, they are like animals. Very few people can receive the Dharma. The above are eight states without freedom. Only those with a precious human life have the opportunity to study the Dharma. It is extremely rare to obtain this precious human life.